I'm really excited to connect with everyone today. My name is Robert Trombley. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here at the college, as well as a 2010 graduate. And as I mentioned, with regard to the way that we go about food, um, it's not a system where we have people sitting around memorizing recipes all day. That's not how we go about approaching food, and that's not how our students go about learning food. It's really about learning and understanding um, technique, understanding the science and procedure that goes into working with foods, and understanding those different cooking methods and how they interchange and how they work with different types of ingredients. From there, we work in a significant understanding of product knowledge, so being able to identify different types of foods and ingredients so that we know each and every step of the process what we're holding in our hand. And then from there, we work in an understanding of flavor profiles, so really how those ingredients are going to react to those different cooking methods that we're choosing and how all that's going to play out as we work through the process. So to do that, what we're actually going to be focusing on today is the physiology of taste. So we're actually continuing um, a series that we've been doing for the last three weeks and we'll continue on for another couple after this, where we're actually highlighting the five tastes that the human tongue can receive. And so the five tastes that we talk about with regard to the physiology of taste are salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Okay? And so today we're going to be focusing on and highlighting the sour taste. Now, sour gets kind of a bad rap because it's not usually something that we think of as a delicious flavor profile with regard to utilizing it in food, but it's actually one of those elements that helps tie in everything else with it. Using sour to enhance a salty dish can really take it a long way. Using it in, in relation to sweetness can take it in a number of different ways, give it some rounded edges. We also use it in terms of the bitter profile to enhance that flavor. And with umami, you can really apply just about anything to umami in terms of generating more mouthfeel. But when we talk about the use of sour, we're really focusing on really two main ingredients, either um, <clears throat> citruses or talking about uh, acids like a vinegar. So vinegars and citruses are usually the main forms of sour that we're going to develop and work with ingredients. Um, and to do that today, to really focus on that sour taste, uh, we're going to be making fresh refrigerator pickles. Um, now, pickles also get a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. I think that they're, it's kind of a polarized, polarizing food. Um, there's a number of people that love pickles and are diehards for them, and then there's other people that cannot stand them. And I think that relates to, uh, directly to what you find in the grocery store, and there's really only two kinds. You come across dill and you come across bread and butter. And there's kind of a lot of imagination loss in just limiting your options to those two types of flavors. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to utilize um, apple cider vinegar in a number of different ways so that you can make a really versatile pickling liquid and how you can get a base from it and turn it into whatever you want and balance it out as a chef and really manage those flavor profiles how you wanna maximize them to get the most out of them. So the first thing that we need to do when we make pickles is we need to make a brine. Now, there's really two variations of making pickles. There's the way we're gonna do it today, which is the fresh slash refrigerator version, um, where we're going to make essentially a glorified marinade. Uh, when we talk about the brine that we're gonna make, we're gonna combine vinegar and sugar and salt and some aromatics. We're gonna make a very flavorful liquid for our, our vegetables to soak in to take on those flavor characteristics. Now, when we talk about more traditional versions of making pickles, through that process, we're actually doing, you would actually do the fermentation process. So you would make a brine of literally just water and salt, and you would soak your pickles in that brine for up to five to six weeks. So a much longer process, obviously, um, but through that process, it's the fermentation that actually helps generate those sour characteristics. If there's anybody that's watching today that was with us when we focused on salt during our physiology of taste series, uh, when we made sauerkraut, that fermentation process of literally just adding salt to the vegetable, the cabbage itself, pulls out that moisture to make the brine. And through the, the breaking down of the bacteria, the lactose bacillus, that's how we generate that sour characteristic. Same thing takes place when you talk about fermenting pickles. So two very different processes, but the one that we're gonna do today, you're gonna be able to eat in about four to six hours. Um, when we talk about the fermentation process, obviously it takes a lot longer, up to five to six weeks. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about the preservation elements of that, but those are the main characteristics that we wanna focus on as we move forward. So first and foremost, we have to get going with the making of our pickling liquid. Um, I've already got three cups of water started in my pan over here. Um, we're going to add to that three cups of unfiltered 
apple cider vinegar. You can use really any type of vinegar that you want in this recipe. I just prefer for this time of year to use the apple cider vinegar. It's got a nice sweet flavor to it to go along with the, um, the harsh acidity of the vinegar element, but just really a nice fall flavor to go with our pickles. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to our three cups of water, okay? And then we're going to add a cup of granulated white sugar. So really within your pickling liquids, most of them are gonna be a combination of some amount of acid and some amount of sugar and a balancing act therein. Um, some can require mostly acid and very little sugar. If you're gonna make a dill pickle, you probably don't wanna put really that much sugar at all, maybe like a teaspoon or so, just to round things out a little bit. Um, but in terms of the sour impact, it's all about your choices as a chef and how much you wanna impact it. So our three cups of vinegar and our three cups of water to just the one cup of sugar is gonna give a nice balance. You're gonna get that tartness of the vinegar, but you're also gonna get some nice round edges from the use of that sugar. So you're gonna get kind of the best of both worlds. So we're gonna add that in, okay? And at this point, I'm also gonna add some salt here. Uh, we're gonna put in about three tablespoons of salt to our pickling liquid. And one good way to learn how to measure your ingredients quickly, especially with salt and pepper and seasoning, is when you first start to work with ingredients, take an actual tablespoon and scoop out a tablespoon worth of salt and actually dump that into the palm of your hand. So you, you can get a feel for how much that actually is. And then with your other hand, try to take as much of that as possible and get it as close to that amount. So that way, when you're working in a restaurant, you can work efficiently. When you're trying to get things done quickly, it's all about that efficiency element. So you don't wanna be sitting there trying to measure out the perfect tablespoon when you're trying to work on the line and work quickly. So really a great way to do those measurements quickly at, at, a, at a fast pace is to measure them out ahead of time and know what they look like. So we're gonna go ahead and add about three big clumps of that in there. We don't need to be actually perfect with this. Like I said, we're from the culinary perspective in terms of salt and seasoning, it's all about taste and kind of tasting as you go. Um, if you're a baking student, you have to be a lot more precise and get things down to the gram um, with your measurements and things of that nature. So a lot, of, a lot of reasons why I'm not a baker, but that's definitely one of them because I like to be able to work with my ingredients kind of carefree in that sense. So it doesn't have to necessarily be perfect. So we're just going to give this a brief stir before we start to work in our aromatics. So what we're going to do is we're gonna bring this up to a gentle simmer and almost to a boil. So that way we can dissolve that sugar and dissolve that salt um, and really bring a nice balance to, uh, to our pickling liquid, okay? So now we're going to start to work in our aromatics. So I've just got some rough, char rough chopped fresh garlic that I'm gonna add in here next. Get that all in there. We're gonna add about a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns. And then my favorite secret ingredient to add to this is going to be some fresh jalapeno. So we're gonna add that in. It's gonna add some nice freshness, some nice spice to it. Uh, really kind of helps round everything out. So when we talk about a combination of flavors, salty, sweet, sour, um, spicy, all of those things over the palate at once is just really kind of a magical combination. So as a chef, you can look to manipulate these in any way you want, um, adding in different aromatics if you want to. You can put celery seed into our, our mixture. Um, you can put caraway seeds in there if you want to, mustard seeds, um, really a lot of different things you can play around with with making your pickling liquid. But at the end of the day, it's all about a combination of some type of acid, your sugar, and your salt for your base, and then the rest is kind of up to you. Okay, so now that we've got our liquid going, like I said, we wanna make sure we get that up to a simmer to a boil. Um, as long as we get that sugar and that salt dissolved into our liquid, that's all we really need to do. And then we'll let those ingredients steep in there for a little while as it comes down to temperature. Um, and that's how we're gonna inject the flavors into the vegetables that we're gonna pickle in just a little bit. So the next thing I wanna do is talk to you a little bit about what we're going to be pickling. Now, traditionally, pickles are always gonna be made from cucumbers. That's kind of the most traditional form of it. As you can see, I have a number of different pickled vessels up here um, with some different uh, vegetables and things. And I'm gonna show you that with this one pickling recipe, this one pickling liquid, you can actually transform any type of vegetable you want. Um, you can obviously make different choices, as I've said, from your flavors, but it's all about the implementation of that sour and that pickling liquid onto these vegetables and being able to turn them into something that's really delicious um, and something that's gonna last a little bit longer. So when we, as I mentioned before, 
transferring from the fermented to the fresh type of pickles. For the fermenting ones, you can leave those in the jar for, for months and really for as long as you need to. Um, they're gonna be safe and they're gonna be food ready um, when you're ready to take them out. When we talk about the making of a fresh refrigerator pickle, um, their chef life is uh, much shorter and they must remain in the refrigerator. So um, you really only get about a week or so out of these pickles. You can sometimes get them a little longer if your pickles or your vegetables are really firm and fresh when you get them. Um, but to remain on the safe side, you want to keep them no less than a week because um, they can start to generate bacteria and things like that. So like any fresh food, you really want to eat it at its peak freshness, which is in the next two to three days or so um, of getting them into the liquid. So um, for the prepping of our vegetables, uh, like I said, we're going to be doing a standard pickle, but I'm going to show you a couple of different variations. Uh, but with the cucumber, a very important element is you want to make sure that they are fresh um, because if they're not crisp when they go into the pickling liquid, they're not gonna get any crisper as they sit in the pickling liquid. In fact, that liquid is actually gonna reduce their crispiness. So that's something you wanna be very mindful of um, when purchasing them. You wanna check for all the soft spots. You wanna make sure that you have a nice firm pickle, uh, or I should say nice firm cucumber, so that way um, it has that, that ability to break down a little bit and still have some good mouthfeel to it. Um, Today we're using a Persian cucumber, but you can use English cucumbers if you want to. Um, really any type of seedless cucumber is gonna be your best option. You don't want too much of a surface area because again, that liquid will break it down and it'll start to get mushy in the center um, because these are primarily made of water. So you really wanna make sure that you have some nice fibrous cucumbers um, in order to get the pickling done right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice these into nice thin chips. We're only gonna do them into about a quarter of an inch. Now, I like to do this with my knife just because I like doing knife cuts. Um, I don't get to do them as much now that I work in admissions with the college, but um, as a young chef and as an aspiring chef, it's always great to do as many knife cuts by hand as possible. Um, it gives you an opportunity to get comfortable with your knife skills, working with the knife, holding your fingers properly, doing all of those things are very important. So um, we're going to you know, approach cutting this cucumber by really kind of being aggressive with it. We want to we want to dive into what we're doing. You want to make sure that you're holding your knife firmly and you want to kind of hold it like a pencil between your, your thumb and your pointer finger. That's going to be your main um, grip on the knife and you want to make sure that you're holding it by the blade. You don't want to hold your knife way back here or down by the handle. You want to choke up on it so that way you get some nice leverage and you're really using the knife as an extension of your hand. It gives you that much more control. And so we're going to go in and start to cut our, ch our chips. Um, we're only gonna cut them about a quarter of an inch, so nice and thin. And so you can see we've got a nice thin, even slice on that. And as you can see, I'm rubbing the back of my knife against the knuckle of my, of my middle finger. What I'm doing with that is I'm doing a measurement. So I'm measuring how much of the cucumber I'm actually cutting. But then at the same time, I'm actually holding the vegetable in place and I'm protecting the rest of my hand. Um, just doing that little bit of protection is going to allow you to, to cut your vegetables properly and it's going to allow you to remain safe as you do so. And then obviously you always wanna make sure to be using a very sharp blade. Um, the sharper the knife, the safer the knife, which I know this seem, seems kind of backwards in certain elements, but remember, as I said before, about choking up to gain control. The sharper your knife is, the more your control you're gonna have in terms of the cutting process. So that's something that you always wanna maintain is a good sharp knife, because I guarantee you, whether you're in a restaurant or here at the CIA, the chefs will go around and they will check the sharpness of your knife. And if you have a dull knife, um, they're gonna let you know all about it. So you wanna make sure that you are prepared for class um, and for work whenever you're uh, working in the industry. These are your tools, so you make sure you wanna take care of them, okay? So we've got our cucumbers sliced up beautifully. And then we're going to also add in some, some Spanish onion to this as well. Um, just another addition of the aromatics, as you can see here in my large jar. Um, I've got some jalapenos in there, but I've got cucumbers and onions. Um, pickled onions are just as good as pickled cucumbers as far as I'm concerned. They're gonna add some more flavor to it and they'll be a nice um, accompaniment to any foods that you wanna add them to. So. In terms of approaching the slicing of our cucumber, or cucumber, um, of our onion, uh, you want to make sure that you're following the contours of the onion. Um, you can see how it's rounded. You don't want to come into it from a straight angle because then you're going to get odd shapes in terms of your slices. So you really want to make sure that you're cutting at an angle as you follow the contours all around. Um, as well, you want to follow those lines. I don't know if you can see them clearly through the camera, but these little lines here are the 
what you really kind of want to follow in terms of slicing. Doing that's going to make sure that your slices are nice and tender and they're going to have really good mouthfeel and it's going to limit the amount of cell walls that you're cutting through um, when you're cutting the onions. So by doing that, it's going to limit your amount of tears that are going to come out of your eyes and different things like that. So always following the proper procedure with cutting is important. So again, we're going to cut these into about a quarter of an inch, just so some nice thin slices. You can see I'm coming in at that angle and just following the contours all around. Again, using my fingers as a guide to protect. Once you get about halfway, you can flip it over onto its other side and continue on from there. Perfect. So now we've got our onions and our cucumbers ready to go. I cut up some cucumbers ahead of time so we can uh, make this go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna get those into a colander. So this is another very important step in the process. So we're actually going to salt our cucumbers and our onions um, and let them sit for about 25 minutes to a half an hour. Um, I don't know how many of you watching today um, are currently in high school or are already graduated from high school, but I'm, if you were like me in high school, um, science class was not my favorite class by any stretch of the imagination. So the fact that I'm about to say this word and understand what it means um, is going to kind of blow my former teachers out of the water. Um, but what we're doing through this process is actually called osmosis, which is a word you might have heard. I don't remember which science class it was in, maybe biology. I could be wrong about that. Um, but in terms of osmosis, what we're looking to do is with the salt is we're going to take out the moisture that's in the cucumbers and the onions and we're going to replace it um, with the salt flavor and really kind of bring in some seeds into this dish. Um, as well, we're going to really kind of lock in the color, that nice bright green color of our cucumbers. That salt is going to help preserve that and lock that in a little bit. Um, as I've said before, salt um, and pickling is a preservation device and salt really is one of those things that can preserve not only flavors and, and your, the health of your food, but also the colors as well. So we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle in just about a teaspoon or so of salt on here. Doesn't need too much to be able to do the job. I'm going to put on a glove really quickly. Okay. We're just going to toss these together, make sure that we get that evenly distributed throughout our veggies. Okay. And then what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to let these rest, let them sit with the salt on there, let it do its magic, and we're going to let it sit for about 25, 30 minutes or so. Um, once it's sat, and you'll, the reason that I have the colander in this bowl is so that that excess moisture can have a place to fall away from. Um, and once that's all ready to go, we're going to rinse it off and then you want to pat it dry. I actually like to lay out the cucumbers and onions onto a sheet tray with some paper towel and then stick it in the fridge for a little bit just to let it dry because that residual moisture on the cucumbers is really going to dilute your pickling liquid. So you want to make sure that they're as dry as possible um, and have all that excess salt removed. So we're going to put these off to the side and I've already got a batch ready to go here in our fridge. beautiful cucumbers and our onion. So we get that ready. You want to come over here, I'll show you the pickling liquid that we've got. Um, all that sugar and that salt is dissolved perfectly. It's really just smelling fantastic in here. Um, it smelled like pickles in here for a few days because I've just been kind of crazy with making pickles, but um, all those flavors um, from the garlic and the black pepper and those jalapenos is really steeping into our vinegar at this point. Um, and so I'm going to kill our heat and set this off to the side. Um, one thing you can do with this is actually transfer it into another container, stick it in the fridge to cool it down quickly. Um, if that's not a real option, like if you're doing this at home and you don't have a lot of refrigerator space, um, you can let it come down to room temperature just on the stove top, but just make sure that you leave it uncovered. That way it has a chance to breathe and it cools down a little bit safer. Um, but here in this pan, I actually have some pickling liquid that I made earlier today and actually chilled down um, in the refrigerator. So um, making your pickling liquid ahead of time is, is definitely an option if you want to do that. Um, so that way it gives you time to get your, your veggies all ready to go. Um, but the main thing is moderating your temperature because if, you're, if your pickling liquid is too hot, once it goes on to your vegetables, it's actually going to cause them to wilt and actually start to cook them a little bit. That's not what we're looking to do. We're trying to pickle them. We're trying to get that sour flavor injected into them. And uh, we really want to make sure that our, our 
cooking liquid is at the proper temperature. So having it chilled down is always probably your safest bet, okay? So I'm going to prepare our vessels here so we can actually start to build our, our new batch of pickles, okay? So I'm going to take our cucumbers and onions and I'm going to actually fill up our container here. You definitely want to try to, whenever you're doing pickling, to use glass containers. That's probably going to be your safest and best bet. Um, if you have to, you could use a plastic container, but I would kind of shy away from using those containers for something other than pickling at that point because they're going to carry over um, and hold on to those flavors that we trap in here. Um, but glass is going to be your best bet. And honestly, they're beautiful. They're vibrant colors. So so it's really a nice way to, to use some decoration with your food um, and kind of use them in a different capacity. So in addition to the cucumbers and onions over here, I've also got some jalapenos and red bell peppers. So we're going to be doing our own pickled peppers here today. Um, on my left and your right, we have a combination of red bell pepper, some batonet of uh, carrot sticks, and some cauliflower. So one important thing when you're using kind of dense vegetables like carrots and cauliflower, try to blanch them off a little bit ahead of time so that way they're somewhat tender. Um, if, they, if you put the pickling liquid into them while they're raw, um, they'll be crunchy. If you like them that way, that's perfectly fine, but most people like a little bit of a less of a bite to um, their pickled vegetables. So that's definitely a choice that you can make, but uh, definitely a good option to try to blanch them ahead of time. So. I'm going to grab a ladle here so we can start to fill up our pickling, pickled vegetables. So I'm going to add our liquid here. And you want to make sure that you leave a little space at the top so that way you have room to put the lid on and it doesn't start to squish out. And again, this is the exact same liquid that I just made. This is what this is. And it's going to be utilized for three different types of, of pickled vegetables. So the versatility of this type of liquid um, is really fantastic. It's a way to kind of up your pickle game um, and really be a nice addition to a lot of different things. If you're, especially if you're serving something um, that has, you know, kind of a heavy fatty dish, if you're doing kind of like um, some type of, of fatty meat, like a brisket or something like that, having some pickled peppers to go with it. If you're making chicken salad that's got a lot of mayonnaise in it, adding some fresh pickles to it, that tartness is really gonna help balance out that fattiness and really thin those things out over the palate, really bring things together really nicely. So it's gonna fill up our last batch of pickles here. Now you can choose to strain out this liquid ahead of time if you want to, but I always like to leave those aromatics and those extra flavors in there because it'll really help to carry on that flavor profile and help build those over the course of the pickling session. Um, so it's definitely a personal option that you can make the choice of, but me personally, I always like to, to use that, um, leave all those aromatics in there, okay? So there you have it. We have three completely different types of pickles. We've got our, um, our carrots, our red bell pepper, and our cauliflower pickles. We've got our pickled peppers, and then we've got our uh, traditional cucumber and onion pickles. So hope everyone enjoys, and uh, happy pickling.